Hey, what's up guys? Uh, about a month ago, a little over a month ago, I wrote a blog post called Otuja, A Brief Guide for Acting Right in Turbulent Times. Um, it's an article that is starting to become an ongoing theme in my, my thinking and in my writing. What Otuja is, uh, is a method for logical decision making. And I guess at the moment, uh, it's my most direct contribution, or my contribution that's a, uh, that's a direct result of my, you know, formal education in philosophy and logic. Um, so, you can find this article on my website, uh, overthoughtandunderstated.com. A link in the description below if you're on YouTube. Uh, and as always, it's in my bio if you're on Instagram right now. Um, but anyway, right now I'm going to read that article for you, and there will be follow-up videos on uh, more nuanced information uh, regarding the, the points that I make in this, uh, in this article about the, the method that is currently in the works. Um, and also I'm going to admit, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to omit from this video the last part of the article, which is... 10 things that you can take away, uh, th 10 things that you'll learn as a result of practicing this logical decision-making method in your everyday life, or at least in my experience, um, there are 10, 10 things that I've learned, and I, I hope that others would too. Anyway, right now I'm going to read the article, and if you want more information on it, uh, subscribe to me here on YouTube, or you know, follow me on Instagram. Uh, there will be more content following. So, here it goes. Otuja, a brief guide for acting right in turbulent times. Welcome to Otuja, which stands for Observe, Think, Understand, Judge, Act. This is a draft of a five-step guide for acting well and intentionally, especially important when there is a high risk of emotional influence on decision-making. Anger, frustration, excitement, fear, pity, empathy, joy, etc. Emotions are a matter of the subjective being alone. Mere reactions to external stimuli. They are neither indicative of nor serve as evidence for any general reality. Uh, in the case that an emotional impulse does seem to reflect general reality, that is merely coincidental and should be accepted humbly. Emotions are not reasonable bases for action in any case. To act on this basis, on the basis of an emotion, is to act in self-interest, and to therefore disregard the well-being of others. One's emotions are one's own responsibility to control. The more one allows their emotions to f flow freely and impact others, the worse that person is insofar as I can tell. It should be considered that fully justified action may be an unattainable ideal. Of course, everyone must act with some degree of self-interest and emotional influence from time to time uh, in order to survive in the world. Um, that still does not justify it, for even martyrs can be perfectly justified in their final act. The best one can do in desperate times, while maintaining that survival is necessary, is to act from an unreasonable basis uh, with the intention to prevent that from becoming a general pattern of behavior in future cases. Otuja is a guide for formulating a good pattern of decision making and therefore to maximize overall well-being around them in, gender, in general. Despite what exceptions uh, may have to be made for necessary expedient ends. The more consciously and frequently this process is applied, the purer one's actions and intentions will be, and the better a person, uh, the better that person will be, quite simply. Um, just a side note, um, I'm going along like what makes a good person and what makes a bad person. Uh, I'm kind of taking an Aristotelian approach here. In Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, he said that the good person, uh, the, the man who's living a good life, is one who has cultivated um, good action uh, through trial and error, through deep thought, 
Uh, but, you know, good character, the man of good character, uh, must cultivate that character over time, you know. It doesn't come without struggle, you know. So this method that I'm about to um, describe for you, to, to do it perfectly is, is almost impossible. You know, it's an ideal. Uh, a monk can, you know, in practice, maybe almost achieve this perfectly, but a, a monk is celibate, not just from... Uh, from romantic relationships, but from socialization. So you put that monk out into the world, you know, who knows? Because um, the, the test of character is just, um, just as important as the intention, right? You can have good intentions, but buckle under pressure. And uh, living in the social world is going to constantly put pressure on you. And so um, acting well in the face of that uh, is a sign of good character. So anyway, moving on. Uh, if you will notice, as I've mentioned uh, the word a few times already, intention matters. What I mean by this term could also be described as an aim or a purpose. Uh, this is not to be confused with um, a goal or a consequence. I'm not being consequentialist uh, in, my, um, in, in my thought here. Um, I'm more of a deontologist, more of a Kantian uh, moral of view. More on that later, maybe. Uh, anyway, in each step of this process, as I will repeat, the intention is to set a foundation for the following step. So, first step, observe. Acknowledge that your first intention is to think clearly. That's the next step, thinking. Uh, in order to do this, you must observe. Clear your mind. Identify whether or not you have any emotional impulses. If you do, then take a deep breath. Take a walk around the block bash your head on a concrete wall, whatever necessary, until those impulses have gone, at least gone dormant. Uh, if not, then congratulations, you are not a decision maker. Go find a wiser, cooler head to depend on. Some people are not thinkers. Some people are doers. So that's kind of like one of the dark realities of this. Not any, everyone can like come close to perfecting Otuja, I think. It takes a thinker and someone who has the courage to apply it in the real world to actually do this fairly well. Uh, some people are just more dependent and they're meant to get, you know, to be given a structure to work within and to stick to that structure. And as long as they have that kind of safe space to live within, then, you know, they can maximize their decision making on their own terms. You know. Anyway, uh, observe everything that you can impartially without bias um, for or against the subjects involved and for any outcome which might affect you, emotionally or practically. Love blinds in this first step. The more you care about the subject, the hotter the lens through which you will perceive it. Whether it is your child who was kidnapped, or a random straight white guy being curb stomped by Antifa in the street, don't let your initial emotional reaction jump to a premature judgment. Simply collect factual data about what you see in this case. As much of it as possible. Without impartial observation, thinking is not possible. Second step, think. Now that you have a basis of observations, acknowledge that your next intention is to understand what is going on. This means that you must first think critically about your observations, uh, as well as continuing to think about your own mental states during that process. The most important thing here is not to compile and organize all of your data in the construction of a viewpoint, but rather to filter out all the useless information, which, by the way, will be the majority of it. Uh, to develop a good filter, uh, it is necessary to have knowledge of, and preferably also, a cultivated sixth sense for logical fallacies. I'll uh, put a link of a master list of logical fallacies in the description below. Um, these are errors of relevance and inference that hinder good reasoning. Uh, once you have sifted through all of the fallacious data, look for patterns in the observation, uh, observations that are left. Um, there may be nothing left over, by the way, uh, which is often the case during, say, political debates. You know, uh, if you ever look at a debate between like Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, uh, they would debate each other and basically use logical fallacies to try to emphasize their points. But once you get rid of all those errors of reasoning, there's literally nothing left to either of their arguments. So it's just like pointless, a substanceless argument, you know? 
Um, anyway, that, that's a case in which you should walk away entirely. You know, when you're trying to dissect uh, a situation logically that um, results in there being nothing left after you sort through all of the fallacious data. Uh, consider as many different interpretations of that remaining data as possible, real or hypothetical. Do thought experiments. Try to follow it through. What's the next step that's going to happen if I follow this through? Um, without critical analytical thinking, understanding, that's the next step, is not possible. So, step number three in Otusia, understand. Take your reasoned analysis and acknowledge that your next intention is to formulate a judgment on which to base your action. What is the most reasonable and least self-interested interpretation you can possibly make as a result of the thinking that you have just done? Uh, do you actually understand what is going on here on all levels? Do you sympathize with the local case and have a bird's eye view understanding uh, of the greater conceptual patterns? Um, so dilate and constrict between the specific and the general all the time. Uh, see how the details fit into the bigger picture and how the bigger picture should change slightly as the result of that detailed input. Um, has this uh, event happened before? Are there any lessons from history that can be learned um, that you, know, you can draw an understanding from? Without understanding to the highest, broadest, and most detailed degree conceivable, valid judgment is not possible. Step four, judge. Judgment is not bad. Judgment is necessary for action. Judgment without observation, thought, and understanding is bad, and often leads to poor and destructive action. Acknowledge now that your intention is to act. In order for your action to be well-intended, the conclusion you have drawn from the first three steps must be valid. Uh, for a judgment to be valid, by logical definition, the truth of its conclusion must follow from the truth of its evidence. No matter how carefully you have completed the first three steps, you still may not be comfortable with making a judgment at all. That is okay. Feel free to go back to any of the steps to reanalyze whether you missed uh, you know, a crucial bit of information or overlooked an interpretation that could have led to a more confident and reasonable judgment. Um, know that you are under no obligation whatsoever to have an opinion on anything or to act if you or to act at all if you do not think that your judgment is true. Truth is the goal, remember. Always. Let your intuition be the final judge. An opinion can be based on as much as nothing. Um, so it is better to have reasonable disbelief than to have unreasonable belief. At least reasonable disbelief will yield well-intentioned actions uh, if you do decide to act. Uh, step five, act. In the case that you have formulated a well-reasoned judgment, acknowledge that your intention is to accept the consequences of the action that you are about to produce. This is hugely important. It is anti-consequentialist, okay? You're acting from duty to the truth. As Kant would say, you're not acting to produce a consequence. Very, very important, okay? Um, act confidently and without apology. Apologies are not about actions themselves, but rather about having done J and A without O-T-U in the Otuja process, and sometimes about having done A, that's action, without observing, thinking, understanding, and judging. So it's kind of a shoot from the hip thing. You apologize because you didn't think before you act. But you, if you do Otuja, you won't have to apologize because you're thinking before you're acting. And at least attempting to understand what the fuck is going on. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Now this is the sixth um, point that I'm going to make. It's not a step in the process, but it's an X factor. Intuit. Intuition. The final bullet point, point and X factor I would like to mention here is intuition. Intuition, I must make clear, has no basis whatsoever in one's personal emotions, beliefs, or conditioning. Although those things can be partially based on it, and will often overlap with it to some degree, blurring the line between intuition and personal baggage. But intuition is our connection to the universal unconscious, to speak in Jungian terms. It's intrinsic to our nature to have intuition. Um... Uh, 
It's our spiritual and truth guiding force, and it by its very nature cannot be wrong. In the case that an intuitive decision is wrong, it is because of interference of the ego, emotions, or a value structure that needs reform. This is, to, this is essentially to trust your gut instincts, okay, uh, with regards to what is true and with the intention of knowing the truth. Um, sorry, I keep losing my place here. Uh, the more naturally, um, the more naturally emotional one is by temperament, the more difficult it will be, I suspect, for them to rely on their intuitive instincts. For the greater the risk that their intuition will be hindered by emotion. Cultivating intuition takes a lot of fine tuning, as everyone's is buried underneath layers upon layers of emotional and conditioned influence. So no one's perfect in their intuition sinking process, right? Um, I cannot give any general advice on how to use your intuition. That is your personal duty and obligation to yourself and to the world. The Otuja process should be repeated as needed. Uh, you will make mistakes. That's okay as long as it is your ongoing intention to act in accordance with the truth. That is to do good for the sake of itself and to accept the consequences of that humbly. Uh, rather than to act in order to produce a consequence to begin with. This is what it means to be an authentic, moral being, I think. I must emphasize once more that Otuja is intended toward an ideal, for one cannot and should not attempt to control external variables in their environment. That is not the point. The point, on the other hand, is to focus on oneself, one's own thinking. Uh, every step of this process is extremely difficult, even the first as to simply observe without emotional or influence or self-interest uh, often requires monk-like meditation um, uh, in the face of emotionally stirring crises. Um, sometimes it will seem impossible. Uh, when it does, inaction alone can show good character. Um, under the condition that you apply Otuja as consciously and frequently as possible, um, and that you get a wee bit better every time you do, you'll probably start to think critically about some popular false beliefs. Uh, the truths, the top ten truths that I'm going to talk about in the next video are some of those things that I think you will realize if you stick to the Otuja method and practice it in as genuine a way as possible. So more on that later, but that is the gist of the Otuja method. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you, uh, you know, take something from it and, you know, continue to follow me, uh, my blog, overthoughtandunderstated.com. Um, follow me on Instagram at overthoughtandunderstated and here on my YouTube channel uh, for more information and more posts on this method, which will probably end up being a book at some point, uh, maybe a collection of essays, um, but more on that later. Um, good luck with Otuja. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.